Hi lovelies, my name is Glory Pendra Akban and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a yoke blouse for a child of about 12 years old. So we'll start off by rolling the shoulder line, the bust line, the waist line, and then the hem or the edge of the paper bell represent the hem of the blouse. We'll mark the shoulder width which is 13 inches divided by 2 is 6.5 and then the next circumference which was 2.5 inches by 3 and then using my French curve I'm going to make the neck hole I'm also going to be slanting the shoulder by 0.5 or 0.7 inches I beg your pardon and using the ruler I'll connect the points then I'll go on and make my arm hole which the length was 5 inches This blouse is for a preteen, so she's beginning to grow bust. So I've imputed her bust measurement there with a 1 inch sewing allowance. Also, using a hip circumference, I'm going to be marking out the measurements at the hem. Coming to the waist, I'm going to use her waist circumference, which was 23.5 inches divided by 4 is 5.8 inches plus a 1 inch allowance is 6.8 inches and using my ruler I'm going to be connecting the bust to the waist and down to the hip and then coming back to the bust line I'm going to be marking or drawing a straight line going upwards to the armhole To make the yoke, we are going to be coming downwards by 5.5 inches, ensuring that we are not too close to the bust line so her bust doesn't show. Remember, she's a child. Using my curved ruler, I'm going to be making a sweetheart neckline. Blouses look nice when the hem is curvy, so I'm going to be curving this hem by going 1.5 inch upwards, just like so, and using my curved ruler, I've made the curve. Now I'm heading out to cut out my pattern. To make the back pattern, we'll rule out a straight line which will be the center back line. Taking the front pattern, we're going to measure from the hem up to the waistline and then we're going to replicate the same thing here. From the edge of the paper, we're going to measure the same thing which was 6 inches from the hem up to the waistline. So this would represent, this line will represent the waistline at the back and the edge of the paper would be the hem of the paper. Now using her nip to waist measurement, which is 11 inches, I'm going to be measuring 11 inches from the waistline upwards and the new line we have there will be the shoulder line. Coming down by 7.5 inches, we're going to mark out the bust line. So now that we have the shoulder line, the bust line, the waistline and the hem in place, we're going to go ahead now and impute the horizontal measurement which is exactly the same thing as we did in front. To make the yoke, I used the front yoke as a guide. 
all right to mark out where the yolks will be meeting at the armhole and then using my curved ruler i made a scoop um neckline at the back remember the front was sweetheart the back is scooped now i'm simply adding a one inch zipper allowance at the center back I totally forgot to impute the side darts in the front patterns, which is what I'm doing now. So to get to side darts, you find the difference between the front bodice length and the back bodice length. And here I got one inch as that difference. Using my ruler, I'll be connecting from the one inch marking, which I did downwards from the bust line, upwards towards the bust um, point on the bust line. Please see my tutorials on how to make a bodice block to fully understand how to place your darts and how to calculate your dart differences, so exercise and all that. Here our patterns are ready and laid out for you to see. This is the lace fabric I'm going to be using. It has lovely gold details and this is the satin I'm going to be using as underlay and lining. It goes nicely with the lace. So I'll begin laying my pattern and cutting now. So to finish up the neckline of the yoke, I've cut a plain toe here, which is off-white in color, exactly the same as the yoke, right? So I'm going to be placing it on the right side of the yoke like so, then I'll go to my machine and sew round the neck hole, just like so, and then we'll flip it over to the wrong side and iron out the neck. I'm also going to be doing the same thing to the back yoke as well. Here the neckline has been finished and I've gone on to iron it. As you can see, um, the tool we used as a lining for the yoke down there and how neat the neckline looks. We did the same thing to the back here. We finished up the neckline and we have the tool 
underneath as the lining for the yoke. Here is the front of the blouse with our darts marked out. So now we're going to go ahead and sew the darts for the underlay and the darts for the lining. Remember we only have darts in the front of the blouse. We don't have any darts at the back of this blouse. So now we'll go ahead and sew the darts. This is the lining and if you look closely you see that I used um, a dot to indicate the pointy part of the darts. And then I made notches to indicate the leg of the dart. So we'll head to the sewing machine now and we'll sew this up. The dart has been sewn. This is the front of the blouse. Now I sewed up the dart treating the lace and the underlay as one. Right? Flipping over you can see the darts there. Right? So I sewed this dart of treating the lace and the satin underlay as one. And this is the lining with the dart also sewed in place. And ironed. So placing the yoke where it should be, we'll just flip it downwards just as you can see, ensuring that the center of the yoke aligns with the center of the blouse, right? I'll go make stitches joining the yoke and the blouse together. Then I would also take my lining right side facing downwards, right side to right side of the fabric over like so, and then I'll go sew up this neck. We're going to be doing the same thing to the back as well. Now I'm done. <laughs> Alright, that's the magic of editing guys. So the neck has been sewn, the yoke has been installed. So then we're going to go down now and finish up the hem of this blouse. To finish off the hem, I'm going to separate the lining from the lace and underlay, just as you can see. So the lace and underlay together as one and the lining separated. Flipping the lining over onto the right side of the fabric, I'm now going to go and sew this up right we'll sew half an inch like so we'll do the same thing to the back as well we'll separate the lace and the underlay and then flip the lining over over the right side of the blouse and we'll sew the hem using 0 0.5 inch here the hem has been sewed and ironed neatly that's the front as you can see, neatly done and the back. Now we're going to go join the side seams up, both sides up and we're also going to join the shoulders together. With the shoulders joined, the side seams joined, we're going to go finish up the center back by installing zippers. But before we install the zipper, let me show you the sleeve I had made for this blouse. I made a half of a circle sleeve somewhat, yeah. So that's the left and the right hand and I'm also going to be using um, a tool of similar color to finish up the hem of the sleeves. the finished blouse zip installed and sleeved insected so beautiful look at our yoke really gorgeous you must you might almost not tell that it's a yoke you know because of how neat the sewing is and how well it was ironed if you've watched this video up to this point then please i deserve a thumbs up please like this video share it with your friends leave a comment you know if you have questions and subscribe if you haven't thanks so much and god bless you